What's up, glitches? In today's video, first we're gonna read a story called Probed by an Alien or Bit by a Vampire, which is very interesting. There's a picture. And then we're gonna read nine more weird, unexplainable stories sent in by fans. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's get weird. <laughs> okay, they got like really out of control. Okay, let's go. It was summer of 2015 and my family had left me alone and gone on vacation because I had to work, I stayed behind. One day I came home late from work and was exhausted, so I went to bed right away. I felt like I slept for days. The next day I woke up in a hurry to get ready for work and my left arm was itching so much. I got dressed and I went to wash my face and then I looked at my arm and it had two identical circular scabs. They were deep and already looked like they had been healing for a few days, but I didn't have anything on my arm the night before. My first assumption was I got bit by a spider, so I called it, went to the doctor, and the doctor asked me if they were cigarette burns that maybe my friends had done to me. I was like, seriously? I wouldn't have come to you if that was the case. I worked all day and none of my friends smoke around me. She prescribed me some Neosporin, this emoji, and I left. I ended up going to a doctor in Mexico, same thing. Wait, why are we going to Mexico? I'm confused about that part. I don't know where you live, but we went all the way to Mexico. To me, that's all the way to Mexico because I'm on Long Island, but okay. We went to a doctor in Mexico, same thing. He was clueless. I asked him if it was a spider bite and he said it didn't look like one. And because I didn't find the spider or bug, it probably was something else. They gave me a steroid shot and antibiotics. No one could tell me what I had and they looked like a vampire bite the way that they were so close together and deep still have scars from it. How did I wake up with two deep wounds from one day to the next without doing anything? I'm still baffled by it and I always have this gut feeling that something happened to me, especially because my grandparents' house who I lived with had a knack for making us have some weird and supernatural experiences. From seeing ghosts to seeing wolfman figures, I could have easily gone missing for a few days without anyone noticing. What do you all think? First of all, I wanna know, before we show this picture, I wanna know, you're saying you could have gone missing for a few days, but like, was it a few days? Like, did you wake up and it was a few days later? I'm gonna assume no, because you didn't say that. And I feel like that would have been a big thing. You would have been like, oh my God. And I woke up and then it was like three days later. Let's look at this picture, hold on. Okay, those are big. I know that's your arm, but like, those are big. I don't think that would definitely not be from a spider, right? Those are too big to be a spider. I could see why he would say cigarette burns. But what the crazy thing is, is that they're like scabbed up. Like you said, it started healing. It's been a few days. It was like scabbed. Like that's the crazy part to me. It's definitely like too far apart, I feel like, to be a human mouth or a vampire mouth. I've only seen marks from alien encounters that were like triangular, but this could definitely be something from an alien encounter. I honestly don't know. Something weird happened to you and I wish I could tell you what it is, but I cannot. If it was an alien encounter, that would also explain the fact that they are healing because, you know, there's like a lot of either time loss or like time skipping, or I feel like the aliens could kind of pause time. No, nope, not pause time, but like put you back at the right time, but have taken you for a little while and then put you back at the right time so that it's kind of like for you, it never happened. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't really know. These are like all just speculations, but this is crazy. And the fact that you have a picture is even crazier and amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Everybody in the comments, I need to know, what do you think this is? This one is called, They See Me, I See Them, and They Convinced Me to Trust Them. Hello, Anti-Matrix. Hi. While this isn't a Matrix story, this is one of the strange and unusual. For as long as I can remember, I've had night terrors. I was told when I was a toddler slash young that I would come to my parents with these terrors. They assured me that they were from my past, I'm adopted, and thought nothing of it. They're an incredibly religious family. I was adopted officially when I was three. I'm 26 now, and when I was 10 to 15, these haunting or visions were the most vibrant. I distinctly remember having sleep paralysis where a man would stand in my closet or over me watching me. I'd scream, but nothing would come out. I'd try to move, nothing would happen. As a kid, this was terrifying. One night, I remember waking up paralyzed and seeing a small girl about six at my bedroom door. She stood in front of it like she didn't want me to leave. She watched me. She didn't do anything but watch. She was so vivid and I swore she was there. I kept the lights on and didn't sleep for days after this. After her, I'd have the regular man on my chest sleep paralysis almost every night. I remember being afraid of everything, afraid to sleep, afraid to close my eyes, and any stuffed animals or toys in my room I was afraid would come alive and hurt me. I don't know what was going on coming from such a religious family. I assumed it was just the devil trying to get to me. I've always been in touch with the paranormal, and it's always been a scary subject for me from not only this incident, but others. Almost a year after seeing her, she came again. 
This time she was standing beside me while I was paralyzed in bed. She stood beside my body and just looked. I was so scared. I tried to keep my eyes closed, but at one point I looked over and she was staring directly into my eyes, my soul. I got this feeling like she wouldn't hurt me. It wasn't the same feeling as the man who would visit me in my sleep paralysis dreams. He wanted to hurt me. She continued to come for years and so did he, but she brought me comfort. He did not. And when he would come, I would wake up soaked in sweat and crying. Fast forward five years and I had seen them here and there, but not as often as I did. They came together. I was asleep at a boyfriend's house, moved out of my parents' house, and then the man came first. He was there on the stairwell, standing there, looking at me. I was so scared, but they had never appeared in someone else's house for me. He was watching me, and while I panicked, while I tried to fight myself out of this dream, eyes racing around the room, heart beating out of my chest, I caught a glimpse of someone else. It was her. She was beside me and he was on the stairs. She gave me this blank look, but I knew that she meant well. I could feel it. He did not. All I can recall from that dream is them looking at each other, staring, until my boyfriend, now husband, noticed me and my eyes sobbing and woke me up. She was protecting me from something. I fully believe it. She scared me so bad when I first saw her as a kid. I stayed awake for days because of her, but she was there to help me. I didn't understand, and I still don't, and from time to time I see them separately, never together. I don't know what it means or what I want it to mean, but I know it still scares the hell out of me. So it does sound like maybe she was trying to protect you, but she clearly wasn't doing a good job because this other being, the man, kept coming to you all the time and, like, scaring you. And so I don't know if she was trying to protect you. I mean, I would assume that she was trying to protect you, especially if when you saw them together, she was next to you when he was at the doorway. Like maybe she was like, no, no, no. But why didn't she do that the whole time? And you only saw them together that one time. I wonder if she was there, but you couldn't see her when he was there. But that doesn't make sense because if she was trying to protect you, I'm not really sure. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments and thank you so much for sharing your story. This one is called Angels in My Life. Hello, Auntie Matrix. Hi. Thank you for reading these wonderful stories and giving people like me a place to belong. I love you. I've lived a traumatic life and strange things happen all the time. The first time I remember being saved by an angel, I was around one years old. I had just had eye surgery and was loopy from the meds and the fact that one eye had a patch over it. We stopped by my grandparents' house and off the bat, I fall down the stairs and busted my lip open, tooth through it and all. Oh, So they cleaned me up and my aunt pulled me aside and gave me a lifesaver's candy. This was 1975, so things were different. But she knew I couldn't have hard candy yet as I had just previously choked on a candy the days before. She then kind of pushed me outside where the other kids were playing. Oh my God, what a different time. My aunt had lost a child before I was born and she took out her pain on me. Anyways, I'm standing there just watching the kids not really even moving around. I'm focused on eating my forbidden candy. So my cousins come from behind and scare me. And of course, I inhaled the candy, but they didn't notice. They kept running around and eventually they were around the corner and out of my sight. I'm still choking and scared. And then everything turned dark and a very bright light was suddenly in front of me. I felt like I was floating. And yes, I realize most people don't remember that young, but I do. It felt like I was on a cloud and I felt safe. A woman was in front of me and she took my hand and kind of pulled me, like shook my whole body. Suddenly I'm laying on my granddad's lap and he is smacking my back hard and I cough and spit out the candy. I had been found laying on the ground alone outside at first thinking I was taking a nap. So he scooped me up and turned to go inside and smelled my breath. He instantly knew I was choking and started doing the Heimlich on me. I was fine when I woke up and I told him I saw the lady that saved me, but he was the one who saved me. My next angel experience happened a couple of years later. I was three and my family lived on a houseboat, mom, dad, and older sister and I. My dad was making us hot chocolate and they had just moved our boat out into open water since docking was only permitted overnight. So we were just on the other side of the area, I'm not sure what it's called, and I remember being in the bedroom, which was on the far side of the kitchen. My mom and sister were up top. Suddenly the stove caught fire and my dad didn't reach for the fire extinguisher. He slapped it with the dish towel and of course the fire spread. He grabbed me and ran topside and told my mom there was a fire and we were going to have to jump into the water. Suddenly there was an explosion and we were thrown into the frigid water. We were not out at sea, but we were far enough that it would take several minutes for a rescue. When I hit the water, it knocked the air out of me and I passed out. My mom and sister were together in the water and my dad was swimming around trying to find me and our dog. He found the dog, but not me. I was sinking 
due to the fact that I was unconscious even though I knew how to swim. Again, this warmth surrounded me and a bright light and this time it was a man. He spoke softly and he told me that everything would be okay and he touched my hand and suddenly I was awake looking up and I could see the boat and the fire and I began swimming towards it. When I got to the surface, I gasped and I could hear screaming. My family was on the opposite side of the boat and couldn't see me. I was crying and screaming for my mom. I turned and next to me was the man that he said it would be okay but I needed to take a deep breath and go under the water quick. I did without questioning him and when I resurfaced again, the boat was almost completely sunk and my dad saw me. Someone was pulling us out of the water into a small boat. We were all okay, but now homeless. But my angels never stopped and I have so many stories of them helping me or saving my life and even my children's lives too. Thank you for reading and if you want to hear more, just let me know. I wonder how many people have experiences like this, but they don't remember the part where they're like unconscious and the the angel or the entity or the being is helping them to come back it's very cool that you remember it is not cool however that you have been in these situations i am so sorry that's crazy and i'm so glad that you're okay but i'm so glad that your angels were there to help you out thank you so much for sharing your story This one is called Hybrid Encounters, and it specifically says in parentheses, not an SW story. Hello, Anti-Matrix. Hi. I'm a big fan of your videos. They often give me goosebumps, and sometimes I have to turn on the lights to keep watching and listening to you. My story unfolded eight years ago in the countryside of southwest France. It was nighttime, but the moonlight could allow me to see into the distance. I was staying at a friend's parents' house for the weekend. In this part of France, houses are widely spaced, each surrounded by fields. Between my friend's parents' house and the neighboring ones, there were several hectares of fields. On that evening, my friends were playing the guitar and singing songs outside. It was late summer, and the nights were finally cooling down. After my friends went inside, I lingered outdoors a bit longer, listening to the songs of nocturnal birds and frogs. There was a fence about two meters away from me, made of wooden posts and two strands of barbed wire. Behind this fence, there was a vast field stretching to the road and the forest. I sat on a ledge facing the field. The outdoor light from the house faintly illuminated the fence, and the field was bathed in the moonlight. At this point, about two meters from me, a transparent silhouette appeared. It stood approximately 1.8 meters tall. Wait, we need to stop because I am in the U.S. Okay, 1.8 meters is apparently almost six feet. So that's tall. It stood approximately 1.8 meters or six feet tall, and I could discern a peculiar electrical activity within its transparent form, pretty much looking like lights game in a plasma ball lamp. Naturally, I was very frightened. A surge of adrenaline ran through me and I wanted to head inside to share this encounter with my friends. However, a strong notion emerged in my mind, combined with the feeling that my friends wouldn't understand and might think I was losing it. This wasn't the first time such things had happened to me over the years. I learned to keep these experiences to myself by fear of judgment or being labeled as crazy. We believe you. As I hesitated to discuss it with my friends, still gazing toward the house, the silhouette approached me. It was only when I turned my head back toward the field, deciding to ignore the silhouette, that it touched me between the ribs and my right shoulder. In my decision to disregard it, I had directed my eyes into the empty expanse of the field, hoping everything would cease. Yet in that field, my eyes focused on a man dressed in Gaulish equipment made of leather and metal straps tinted in blue and red. My eyes traveled up his body to his hybrid deer head. At that moment, I noticed another man behind him wearing similar clothing, but with a wild pig head. I was in shock and the three individuals vanished. I didn't know how to feel, but I felt somewhat uneasy and isolated in this inexplicable experience. Knowing that my friends wouldn't believe me, I chose to go to bed immediately. The next day, I woke up early with tons of questions about what I had witnessed the night before. I couldn't help but recall a similar incident from my childhood, six, seven years old on my grandfather's farm. I was playing alone in the barn, despite it being forbidden due to the presence of agricultural tools. On that day, a sound captured my attention and my eyes settled on a feathered snake that I thought was trying to frighten me by raising the feathers on its neck and wings vertically. In panic, I sprinted as fast as I could to reach my grandmother and share what I had seen. Unfortunately, no one believed me, and I think that's when I grasped the importance of keeping such experiences to myself. 
Today, I try not to dwell much on these occurrences and let peculiar things unfold as I have no control over them. I hope my story resonates with others. Thank you for reading. I wish you a lovely day. Okay, so I can see why you said in parentheses, not an S Walker story, not a flesh pedestrian story because of the deer head. Although I believe that the deer head is more of a Wendigo. I'm not sure about the pig head, but even with all that information, the first being that you saw definitely sounded like some sort of alien being, right? Because it was like kind of translucent and had like electricity going in there. That description, by the way, is reminding me of my Fortnite skin. This is my Fortnite skin, by the way. And like in her body, whoever knows, whoever's seen this in Fortnite, but like inside of her body, it's like the universe is like moving around, but it was giving me that kind of vibe, but more translucent than that. So by that first creature, I'm going to assume that that was an alien being. And maybe these other beings were also aliens or hybrids or something. I, I don't even know. I have no idea. I don't know. This is a very cool and interesting story, though. Thank you so much for sharing. People in the comments, please let me know what you think. This one is called The Life-Changing Exploding Rubik's Cube. Hi, Indie Matrix. Hi. I'm so thankful for you reading my story. So here goes. Woo. This whole experience started with me having a very vivid and lucid dream. Normally, I never remember my dreams. So when I do, I always think of it as a sign or something significant that I should pay attention to. The dream started with me noticing I had an eye in the middle of my right hand. I was embarrassed by it and tried to hide it from anyone seeing it. Although I was hiding it, I was also trying to periodically look through it. I spent the whole dream worried I'd be caught and punished for having the eye or being different and was never confident enough to look through it. When I woke up, I actually remembered the dream and I thought it was weird, but went on with my day. Never really thought twice about what the sign was or significance of the dream. The next night, I had another very vivid and lucid dream. This dream was about me getting an exploding Rubik's Cube tattoo. In the dream, I was so excited to get the tattoo because in the dream, I knew it meant something great and signified I had completed an amazing conquest. The next day I woke up, remembered the dream, pondered it for a minute, trying to figure out what was so special or significant of an exploding Rubik's Cube. I chalked it up to having a creative imagination and went on with my day, although I could not stop thinking about it. Later that same night, after thinking about the exploding Rubik's Cube dream all day, I decided to Google images of exploding Rubik's Cube tattoos. My curiosity got the best of me, and I wanted to see if any images would look like what I saw in my dream. I sat outside my house scrolling images of all kinds of tattoos, none of an exploding Rubik's Cube though. There were plenty of images of Rubik's Cubes, solved and unsolved, and math equation tattoos, but no images of the exploding cube I had seen so vividly in my dream. I scrolled for a few minutes looking at all the pictures until one caught my eye. The image was not of a tattoo at all, and that's what made it stand out. The image appeared to be a drawing of an old school brown paper that had ripped edges and looked like it was straight out of a book from the 1800s. The drawing was of a pyramid and at the top of the pyramid was a glowing cube that actually looked to be exploding. I clicked on the image to check it out and the moment I did is when it happened. The moment I clicked on the image, my phone got so bright, like really, really bright flash occurred the second I clicked on the image. The light was so bright, I tried to shield my eyes from it. And once I brought my right hand to my face, my hand was jolted against my forehead, palm facing out where the eye was. And I felt as though I had been hit by lightning. It happened so fast and it was so forceful. I dropped my phone and fell to the ground. I came to a few seconds later and my heart was racing like I had never felt before. I felt like I was feeling every emotion at the same time. I wanted to cry and scream in both pain and joy. I felt as though I was one with everything and feeling everything at the same time. I know it sounds crazy, but the best I can describe it is the most intense emotions I have ever felt all at once. I also feel the need to say that I was 100% sober during this experience. I sat there for a few minutes trying to gather myself and figure out what just happened to me. Once I calmed down and my heart stopped racing, I decided I was just losing it and needed to go to bed. I didn't tell anyone about what happened to me because I knew I sounded crazy and I didn't think anyone would believe me. The story doesn't end there though. The next day, I went to pick up my three-year-old daughter from her dad's house. When I was putting her in the car seat, she screamed, oh my gosh, mommy, you have pretty new eyebrows. Oh, I want to have pretty new eyebrows too. My jaw dropped to the floor. I had not done anything 
different to my eyebrows or makeup. And I truly believe she was seeing or noticing something else that was different in my forehead area, maybe an illuminated third eye. I did so much research in the weeks after this experience, trying to figure out what was happening to me or at least find someone else I could talk to about it without sounding like a lunatic. The best I came up with at the time was maybe a spontaneous Kundalini or third eye awakening, but I've never known for sure what to call it. Since that day, it happened on October 27th, 2017. I have never been the same. I feel like my intuition and Claire abilities came on full force and it has been a wild ride. If anyone has experienced anything like this or has any ideas of what possibly happened to me that night, I am open and eager to discuss. Thank you so much for reading my story and for creating a safe space to share these wild experiences. That is exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say 100%. I think that was a Kundalini awakening. And yes, it was spontaneous. But at the same time, I think your your soul, your spirit or whatever, you knew that it was coming on because you had the dream about the third eye and I know the third eye wasn't here it was here but when you had the experience your hand was here where the third eye was and you were trying to see through it and you weren't able to see through it and then you had that dream about the exploding Rubik's Cube which brought you to search for it and brought you to have to trigger the Kundalini awakening the spontaneous third eye awakening I'm trying to search it up but I can't find that I'm even trying like pyramid with exploding cube on top I can't find it but regardless 100%, like without a doubt in my mind, my opinion is that this was a spontaneous kundalini or third eye awakening. Um, And I have not had one personally, so I can't share my experience with that. Although I wish I would have one, even though it does sound a little bit scary just for a second, but it sounds really cool. But I know so many other people have, like definitely have, right? Because you're changed after that too. Your intuition is stronger. Your clairs came out. So friends in the comments, friends watching this video, if you have had a kundalini awakening or a third eye awakening and you want to share some of your experiences or connect about it with this person in the comments, comment section, please let us know. Tell us all about it. And thank you so much to you, dear writer, for sending this story because it was amazing and I appreciate it. This one is called Helped Ghost Clients Slash Patients Cross Over in a Practitioner Fashion. Hi, Indie Matrix. Hi. My twin sister and I are huge fans and so very thankful you created a forum for all of us to share and not feel like they are alone or crazy because they aren't. Yes. This may be a little long, but I want to give you some context before we get to the story. I want to start by saying my twin sister is a powerful medium and intuitive. I'm intuitive as well, but nothing near her level. Those close to us hear our stories and some think we're crazy, but others in our current career realm don't know and we choose to keep it private. We've been told by our guides that we have cycled back through lifetimes together a considerable number of times, and it's not unusual because we do frequently cycle back in soul groups, all playing different roles at different times, i.e. your sister may have been your mother, brother, father, or grandparent in previous lives. Yes. The list goes on in terms of roles we can choose to play for each other's growth and expansion. Yes, yes, yes. My sister channels frequently, and I have been asked by our guides to take notes on them to help her remember or take action on things. I have a file folder of channelings, sometimes spanning 14 pages long. Oh my God. They love to talk, LOL, and we love communicating with them. She's been able to see, hear, and feel spirits for as long as she can remember, so as you can imagine, we have a lifetime of stories, literally. Some make sense and are clear as to what the spirits want and why they are there, and some make sense after a few days or over a span of weeks when all of the pieces of the puzzle are revealed to her in many different ways. It definitely requires paying attention and some detective or guessing work on her part. We've also been told by our guides that my sister's gift is reaching a new level or phase, and she is shining like a bright light that many spirits can see from a distance, a lighthouse or a beacon, so to speak. They can easily see it and come to her for help. We've been told through channelings, spirits know who is intuitive. It looks like waves in someone's aura if it's not shining brightly. I'm guessing it's like a radio wave or something. We've also been told through channelings, our life purposes are to help others through coaching, hypnosis, past life regression, and QHHT, quantum healing hypnosis technique. Yes, I want to get that done so bad, by the way. We've been working through our education so we can launch in our life purposes and feel we can't do it fast enough. We were thinking we would be helping living human beings, and we will but that's not all. LOL. It gets good. Now getting to the story. Recently, she was told by a highly intuitive friend of ours that the patio room in her house was full of spirits wanting help and that she needed to set boundaries with them so they can't just hang out in her home. It can drain her, interfere with her electronics. She works from this room and they can basically mess with her either for fun or to get her attention if they desire. So she needed to set boundaries with them. Even after having her gift her entire life, she can still get creeped out at times, especially when they are dressed of a pilgrim age. I remind her that a spirit is a spirit all the same, 
regardless of when they last lived to help calm her down. She set a boundary that they could not come onto her property. All of this can be done through thoughts and intentions telepathically. Afterward, she felt her energy and a sense of mental clarity with less fogginess return. A few days later, she was taking out her garbage and saw the spirit standing at the end of her driveway in a group. We were later told that they had numbers to help the order in which they would be seen, and two of them became fast friends and even switched their numbers to help one be seen first. Oh my God. One even waved at her and smiled. She returned the courtesy. LOL. This is not shocking to us after a lifetime of experiences slash occurrences with spirits. This is normal everyday dialogue between us. Let's get to the story. Shortly after setting boundaries, she called saying they were trying to come through that day and it was time to start communicating with them to help them. Her guides gave her a heads up that they were here to be helped by her. Once she opened up, ghosts, we like to call them spirits to be respectful because we all are, living her past, started stepping up in a one-by-one fashion as if they were our clients or patients asking for help. It was pretty interesting. They each shared their story of what they had done in life and either asked to be crossed over or to be taken on as a patient so that they could. She can feel their energy and see their auras knows if they were being honest or lying. Okay. The stories of what came through were one of a psychiatrist from a 50s or 60s that hadn't done right by his wife and child with his male role in society. And since learning his wrongdoings, I don't think he was the kindest to them at times. A tough, harsh ruler of his domain, so to speak, but had since learned that it wasn't right, the why behind it, and that he had changed. She knew he was telling the truth and she helped him cross. They also offer things in return as a form of payment. She asked for that. For instance, he promised to come through when we needed help with clients in the future with our future business. There was also an Italian whose parents were in the mafia and he was asked to do things that weren't ideal. He did what he had to do for the sake of the family but wasn't proud of it and didn't want to do it in the first place. We also spoke with a slave that has now realized her value and was ready to go home to see her loved ones and asked that I design a dress, shoes, and purse for her versus the sack that she wore so she could feel her prettiest and now knew that she deserves it. As I created it for her in my mind, she would have me tweak things to her desire. She asked me because I was fashion oriented versus my sister. LOL. This one was touching and made me cry while helping her. Next was a young man that didn't quite live what he would call a gang life, but could have done better and been nicer to his mother and sister. He wasn't ready yet. He asked if she would take him on as a patient to help him to learn to reach a better state of being so that he could cross over. One of our guides came through and said that he had to take him through the underworld to experience some things and then bring him back up to be able to cross over so that they would return in seven to 10 days once he is ready. My sister also received a vision of what it would be like for that young man and felt bad for him, but also knew that it was going to be horrific, but necessary for his growth and awareness. I will say we've been told there is no hell, just a choice to be absent from the light, but other dimensions can look like what we perceive they would. Another story for another day. I'm not claiming truth, just sharing what we've been told. Skipping to one that was a woman my sister refers to as Daisy. She had a straw hat with a stemmed daisy flower coming out of it. Daisy proceeded to tell us how her husband was no good and lazy and she had to do it all in life for her family and her children and asked to be crossed over. My sister felt her energy and immediately with a stern tone told her no. She had to go and observe others and learn first and that she wasn't a good person in her recent life and still isn't. And she can't cross over until she can learn or desire to be better ouch, but necessary. Apparently, the other spirits weren't a big fan of her while waiting at the end of the driveway as well. They had a nickname for her, but I can't recall it. Lazy Daisy or something like that. Just because they are spirits doesn't mean they don't think and behave in a fashion as they did in life. So crazy, but also so gratifying to help the ones that deserve peace and to cross over and to prevent those that don't deserve it yet from passing into the higher vibrational realm with other high vibers. And I get it. That just doesn't seem kind to the high vibing spirits. We haven't held another session since then. She also often sees and communicates with UFO spirits when trying to go to sleep as well. It was a long process of them getting her to trust them and to allow them to help her with her health when she would try to sleep at night. Most people won't see them, but she can. They said they have many piled up to work on and kindly urged her to stop standing in their way of their job, so to speak. LOL. They now know to give her a certain wave when they arrive so she knows it's them. They have a practice of switching out different color crystals in her head around the third eye area. When they do, it helps relieve a lot of sinus pressure she chronically suffers from. I know, the stories can go on forever. I wanted to pass along some resources for glitches to help gain more knowledge and awareness around all things metaphysical or unseen in the spirit and or physical reality, UFOs. It's most fascinating. I'm not affiliated with the resources and not claiming all of this is true. There are many variables in multitude of ways, but I hope this helps glitches everywhere. 
Number one, Dolores Cannon's lecture series on Audible or in book form starts to answer a lot of questions. She practiced a deeper form of hypnosis on clients for decades that allowed her clients to access their soul's higher knowledge held deep in their subconscious from past lives and when they existed in between realms. They share all of what they had seen and learned for themselves as evolving spirits and unearth how some past life experiences can still be affecting them now. She has many books on many topics that she has compiled and published over decades through her work. Yes, love Dolores Cannon. Number two, next level soul podcast on YouTube. Thousands of interviews and channelings with well-known psychic slash intuitives that cover any and all metaverse related topics. They also often channel on the podcast so the sources they communicate with can share as well, i.e. guides, counsels, paladins, ascended masters, etc. That's actually really cool. I want to check that out. Number three, finally, the Gaia streaming channel has helped add some extra layers to the various types of UFOs that exist and their cultures as various races. Some are peaceful and some are scientists, some are warriors, etc. Between these resources and my sister's channelings, we feel we would often have a seemingly decent answer for the why behind a lot of Glitch's questions, but no one will ever know it all. I believe if anyone would believe our story, you and the Glitches would. Peace and love to all. Keep on glitching on and being the awesome, unique you that you all are. I'm in gratitude that we're blessed enough to catch a glimpse of knowing there is so much more out there than the average person is aware of. It doesn't always feel like a blessing, but to me, ultimately, it is. Much love to all. A sincere thank you for what you do, Andy. Stay awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this. This was so cool. I think that's so cool that you guys do that and that you're working towards all that. And thank you for the information that you gave as well for other people to look into stuff like this. This one is called The Stair Gates. Hi, Dimitrix. Hi. I hope you're well. Been binge watching videos of yours today and felt like I needed to share one of my many creepy stories with you. So here it goes. I've always been super sensitive to the paranormal. It was much worse when I was a child, but has calmed down a lot over the past few years. I had a baby and things seemed to have tapered off since then. But something happened to me about five years ago and it always randomly hits me at moments. My mom got pregnant in late 2017 and we were all shocked because she was adamant she'd never have another child. She already had me and my brother who were both in our 20s when she fell pregnant again, so there's a considerable age gap between us and our youngest brother. When my youngest brother was about eight months old, we put stair gates up at the bottom and top of the stairs so he wouldn't fall down or climb up the stairs whilst he was crawling around. In the months following the gates being put up, I began to experience things that didn't feel quite right to me. I have always struggled with my sleep, terrible nightmares, full night terrors that have me bolt upright in bed screaming, sleep paralysis, etc. And the months after the gates were put up were no exception. I would be the only person to awake through the night until it started to get light out. I was experiencing insomnia like I never had before. You have no idea how many times I just had to say the word experiencing. I couldn't say it. I would hear things downstairs throughout the night that I just put down to the house creaking or our cat getting late night zoomies. My bedroom was directly at the top of the stairs. There was a small hallway and then my mom and older brother's rooms were across the hall a few steps. For about a month, it was just downstairs I'd hear noises until one night I could hear the downstairs gate rattling every now and then. Honestly, I was freaked out, but I rationalized it by telling myself it was just the cat climbing through the bars. After a week, I think I began hearing the steps creak as if someone was coming up them. Oh my God, so it's like slowly making its way. Another week of this, and then one night I hear the top stair gate rattling as though someone is trying to unlock it. I shut my bedroom door and put my headphones in because the noise is driving me crazy. Then, on Halloween, my best friend and I go out for a few drinks. She leaves early and heads back to my mom's, as my whole family loves her and she's practically our family, so she has a key, and texts me to let me know that she's at mine and wants to know roughly what time I'll be home. I don't think much of it, just tell her I'll head back in a few hours and she should get some sleep if she can. When I get home, the house is quiet, so I sneak my way in and head up to bed. In the morning, my friend tells me that she got freaked out because after she'd gotten into bed, she heard someone coming up the stairs. She thought maybe my mom had gone down to the kitchen in the night but when she called out to my mom, nobody answered. Now, my friend is the most rational-minded person I have ever met. She does not believe in the paranormal or anything like that. She's super science and needing proof for anything before she just believes it, so this freaked her out to say the least. Anyway, another few weeks go by and I'm hearing the top stair gate all through the night. It's driving me insane. I tell my mom I cannot sleep because of it and she suggests that I ask whatever it is to stop with all the noise that I really need some sleep and I need to be up in the morning. So that night, I get into bed and I say out loud, please stop making the noise through the night. I'm desperate to get a full night's sleep. And I turn the lights off and roll onto my side. It's all quiet for a while and I thank my stars that I'm not feeling afraid until a horrible feeling washes over me and I open my eyes to see my bed bedroom door slowly opening, letting the hallway light creep in. I say out loud, stop it. And something rolls 
across my bedroom floor. I dart out of my bed and run across the hallway to my mom's room where I curl up at the foot of her bed and sleep there instead for the night. The next night, I'm feeling exhausted, and to my surprise, I fall asleep without any trouble. And I start having a dream that I'm sitting on the sofa in my dad's living room. A year before this, my nan had passed away in the living room of my dad's house, and I had been with her while it happened. So I have a dream that I'm sitting in my nan's spot on the sofa, and I can't look around, but I can see the TV in front of me. I suddenly get this overwhelming sense that she sat beside me, and she wraps an arm around my shoulders. It's so realistic that I can actually smell her, and I begin to cry. She doesn't say anything, and I don't see her, but I know she is there holding me. When I wake up, it's morning, and I can smell her in my room, which makes me feel like she actually visited me in my dream. The noises were gone, and I never heard them again after that. I always wonder if she came to visit me and made the thing that was scaring me go away. What do you think? I'd love to hear your ideas. Take care, love, and light to you always. Okay, so first I was going to say, oh, Nan is visiting you, and that was Nan, right? But I don't think it was her. If she wanted to come visit you. She would just visit you like she did in her dream. I don't think that she was, like, in the house slowly making her way up the stairs, like, through weeks of time. So I am going to say that I think I do agree with you. I think that there was something and I think that your nan came and protected you from it and maybe got it to go away. That's definitely, that's my take on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and thank you so much for sharing your story. This one is called Very Wholesome But Kind of Creepy. Hi, Dematrix. Hi. My story is about pennies and finding them in crazy places. I hope you enjoy. So my family has always said that when we find pennies in odd places or in places you know there wasn't a penny a minute ago, it's someone from heaven saying hello and saying they're watching over you. I personally have never seen that not hold fast. I have found a penny after every panic attack I've ever had. Luckily, only a few in my life. And they'll always be in odd spots in my house and in my belongings. I've also found one with every new job I started or promotion I've gotten. That might not sound too wild, but as someone who never carries cash or change, it's weird to find just a random penny in a cabinet or in your sock drawer. To make things weirder, there are two instances in my life that I would find hard to believe if I didn't literally live it. One time I remember, and the other time I was an infant. The time I remember, it was shortly after my grandfather passed. I was 12, and my older brother and I were home alone. We were just sitting in the living room, and we heard a tink sound come from the kitchen. My brother and I looked at each other, confirming we both heard it and decided to go to the kitchen to see what it was. In the smack dab middle of the kitchen floor was a penny. We started freaking out and trying to rationalize how this could have happened. I remember my brother picking up the penny and dropping it a few times to confirm that it hitting our slate floors is what we heard. Surprise, surprise, it was. We had no idea how it could have gotten to where it was without being thrown or dropped there. The time I do not remember, I was something around a year old and it was the day that I was baptized. This happened to also be the anniversary of my great grandmother's passing. My mother and her mom, my gram, took me to the restroom to change my diaper. When they took my dress up, I had a penny laying flat on my stomach just above my belly button. They were both in complete shock of how it got there. Both of them had no idea and still like to tell the story. And yes, I still have that penny. Oh, I don't exactly know what I believe in terms of religion or higher power, but I do really like to believe that my past loved ones are still looking out for me and letting me know that they're still with me in my times of need. Thank you, Auntie Matrix. I love your videos. Oh my God, yes, pennies from heaven. That is exactly what pennies are. I love, okay, I loved the first one where it just fell in the middle of the in the middle of the room in the middle of the kitchen but the second one where you literally had a penny on your stomach above your belly button like under your dress at your baptism that was definitely someone saying hey i'm I'm with you here at this baptism right now that is so cool that is so cool what are some signs that you guys have seen from loved ones let me know in the comments and let me know what you thought of this story thank you so much for sharing This one is called How I Got Confirmation That I'm More Than Human. Hey, Dematrix. Hi. As a fellow Long Islander, I would appreciate if you kept me anonymous. You got it, but hey, fellow Long Islander. I've been watching your videos for a while now, and they often remind me of my own stories. I've got a few, but I'm going to share one of my most vivid, not so vivid ones. This one takes us back to Halloween time, 2019. I was 27 at the time. My boyfriend was out of town and we were trying out an open relationship. Horrible idea, I don't suggest it. So when I was invited to an old coworker's Halloween fiesta, I brought a guy that we invited into our relationship instead of my boyfriend. This coworker was three generations older than me and had her own teenage daughters. She was very open with me that her, her daughters, and her husband were all witches. We get to the party and because they're witches, they go all out for the party. To paint a picture, they do a homemade haunted dungeon in their backyard with a CCTV to catch everyone's reactions and everything. Extremely cool. But on to the spooky stuff. 
There is a huge fire pit made of stone with a half circle around it with seating, with the half circle being about 25 to 30 feet in diameter, all made of stone, even the floor connecting the pit to the seating. Her husband is an engineer and built it himself. Now, I believe that this fire pit was built for ethereal reasons and its design was a specific design. With the fire ablaze, I see a life-sized doll dead center of the half circle sitting there wearing a hood brandished with an alien face mask and crossed arms in one hand was a pack of king-sized reeses and in the other okay so it's a person in a costume i forgot we're at a halloween party i was like what is happening in one hand was a pack of king-sized reeses and in the other an unopened bottle of corona now to the naked eye this is clearly a doll but i instinctively said to my coworker, who's that sitting by the fire she grinned delighted that i can sense the presence of a soul sitting there she says that that's my mother. We summoned her here tonight. Halloween is her favorite holiday and she comes to visit us every year. What? She didn't go into too much detail, but she said that part of the ritual was to give her some of her favorite items, hence the Corona and the Reese's. To me, it all genuinely felt as if someone was sitting there watching over the party. There were no malicious feelings coming from her mother, simply love and elation. So much so that I sat down next to her for a while. Everyone else was off partying and I didn't want her to be completely alone. It genuinely felt like there was someone sitting next to me. The rest of the party goes on, nothing too noteworthy until we near the end. Somehow without me noticing, everyone had left the party except for my friend my coworker and myself. Even her family had gone inside. My coworker calls the two of us over to behind the stone wall of the fire pit and all of a sudden things get heated. My coworker pulls me away from the guy I brought and he did not like that one bit. The two start screaming at each other about me. This is when my memory starts to get fuzzy and there's a reason for it. This memory of mine feels as if it's encased in a bubble. I know it doesn't make much sense, but that's the only way I know how to describe it. My coworker starts saying things along the lines of, you can't have him, I won't let you have him. She gets in between him and I, and I felt so safe. It felt like a baby being protected, not scared. Similar to where mommy and daddy are fighting kind of thing. I even remember holding my arms close to my chest T-Rex style and almost cowering behind her. I don't remember much of the things he was saying back. She gets in his face and says to him, I know what you are and I know what he is, me. I know what you want with him and I'm telling you that you're not allowed to have him. You are a blank. To which he grins and agrees that indeed he is almost happy to have been found out. I remember her saying the word, but the word itself is blocked from my memory. I remember it was a word that I had never heard before. She then tells him that she is putting a spell on me so that I would be disgusted by him and want absolutely nothing to do with him. And seconds after that, the bubble surrounding my memory pops and everyone is vivid again. The dude is pissed and demands that we leave. I give my coworker the biggest hug and whisper thank you in her ear and him and I depart. I indeed want nothing more of this man didn't want to kiss him, touch him, or look at him. I was repulsed. I was still dumbfounded and in shock about what just happened. I started asking him what she was talking about, and he claims he has no idea and that my friend is crazy. I retorted, well, you must have had some idea because you were agreeing with her and calling her something back. You guys were having a conversation. No one has a conversation like that when they don't know what they're talking about. And he says, I was just humoring her. She's drunk and insane. I know he was lying and he was trying to diminish what just happened to paint himself in a better light. I dropped him off back at SBU campus, blocked his number, and never spoke to him again. Never wondered what was, what could have been, etc. I tried reconnecting with her in 2022 to ask her what happened that night because it was eating away at me. Knowing that someone knew what I was while I was in the dark about it myself, I found myself reading friends' minds from time to time, saying things at the same time as them without any provocation, etc. So I knew there was something that separates me from others, but unaware of what. She was recently struck by a car in the Walmart parking lot and was high on painkillers, rightfully so, and I'm not sure if it was the drugs or she was downplaying it on her own to protect me. Maybe I'm not supposed to know what I am, but she just said, oh, he was a narcissist and I knew he wasn't good for you, so I tried to scare him off. My recollection of that night does not line up with her explanation, and I don't believe her, so I guess I'll be searching for answers. Thanks for reading. Feel free to reach out with any questions. She has to be lying, because if she was saying, I know what you are, I know what he is, I know what you want with him, then it wouldn't just been a narcissist, right? Because if that guy was a narcissist, what would you be? What would she call you when she says, I know what you are, I know what he is? That's really weird. I wonder what you are, and I wonder what he was. I honestly, I'm no help here whatsoever. Does anybody here? Anyone watching have any ideas of what this could be, what this person could be, what that person could have been? Please let us know in the comments. I'm very interested. And thank you so much for sharing your story.
This one is called The Girl in the Stairwell. Hi, Andy. Hi. I wanted to tell you my haunted house story. It's a rather long one. In 2004, my best friend called to say he wanted to move back to our home state and would I like to share a house with him and his partner. We decided he would pick the house. This was the first mistake and I just pack my bags and move in. He didn't believe in the supernatural, but I always have. He told me he chose the house and we would move in two weeks. He gave me the address so I could do a drive-by inspection of the outside. My other friend and I drove by the house and as soon as we did, I felt a burning around my throat. I put my hand to my throat and I said, someone hung themselves in there. This other friend was used to me knowing things and didn't think too much of it. The week before we were due to move in, I was in a spiritual shop. I had never met the owner before and I was just kind of having a look around. The owner stopped me and said, I have a message for you. Don't move into that house. Someone committed suicide by hanging there. There will also be a fire started by water. I was taken aback by this. This woman didn't know me. How could she possibly know I was moving? Also, how would a fire start from water? I should have listened, but I didn't. We moved in and chose our rooms. I took the room downstairs with a separate bathroom. Oh my God, why didn't you listen? No one wanted the front room. I can't explain it, but it felt cold and almost like it was closing in on you. Even my best friend remarked it didn't feel like a bedroom should. The oddest thing about the house was a huge pot plant hook. Like I'm talking, it almost looked like an iron meat hook hanging directly in the hallway above the stairwell. My best friend remarked it must have been for a big potted fern or something. I asked a real estate agent, could she have it taken out? And she replied, it's been screwed in and is a risk of damage to the roof to take it out. What? A few weeks passed and nothing odd till my best friend was in the shower upstairs. I heard a sizzle and looked over at my TV. The water from the shower was leaking through the roof into my TV and it caught fire. I was trapped as it was at the exit. I managed to put it out, but then I thought, a fire starting from water, just like the lady had said. After this, we got a cat who would sit at the stairwell where the hook was and hiss. I didn't tell my father about any of this. He came to visit. He was rather intuitive and came out of the bathroom and said, I just saw a black swirling mass in your stairwell. Little things like this happened, but when my mother came to stay, it got out of control. She had to choose the weird room as it was the only one available. Once I was driving out the driveway and looked up and saw a girl in her 20s with long dark hair staring out from my mother's room. I realized I could see through her like I could see the other things in the room behind her, and then she vanished. I didn't tell my mom this as she still needed to sleep in that room. One morning, I woke up around 4 a.m. I heard someone crying, and I realized it was my mother. I raced upstairs and switched on her light. My mother sat a bolt upright in her bed. She had bright red finger marks all around her throat like someone had tried to strangle her. She told me she dreamt of an angry young female who told her to get out. We were both shaken, but home alone, I decided I would stay in her room until sunrise. Why wouldn't you do it the other way around? Why wouldn't she come in your room? I don't understand. As soon as I turned off the light and got into bed, the TV in the lounge room turned on and went to full volume with the sound of static. And then we heard four very loud bangs, like someone was thumping on the wall inside the room. I screamed out for whatever it was in the name of God to leave us alone and the TV turned off and everything went quiet. A few weeks later, a man came to our door and said he built the house and he'd like to come visit once a year on the anniversary of his daughter's birthday. And was it okay if he tore the house? He seemed overly emotional and thanked us for looking after the house. After this, I started having visions that the young woman who had lived there hung herself off the stairwell and used that hook to tie the noose. That's exactly what I was going to say. But she didn't frighten me. Now I felt that she just wanted to be acknowledged. We decided to not renew the lease. When the real estate came for the final inspection, I decided to say something. I said, next time you rent this place out, please tell them someone committed suicide here. She looked at me with really wide eyes and said, how did you know that? Now we had all experienced something we all said at once because she's still here. The agent got very nervous and said, look, I'm not supposed to say this, but the man who built this house, his daughter committed suicide here via the stairwell. He found her on her birthday. Her boyfriend used to lock her in that front room and abuse her. The owner paid to keep the suicide out of the papers because he was running for counsel at the time. So this confirmed everything we had experienced and I sometimes still drive by that house and it gives me the same awful feeling and I do wonder if the new tenants experienced the same things we did. But now, if I need to move, I will make sure I know the history of the house first. Yes, thank you for listening to my story. That's exactly what I thought. As soon as you said that hook was there, I thought exactly that's what it was. That's where she did that from. 
Then you saw her in the window and I was like, that was the person who did it. I did not, though, think that you were going to say that she was locked in that front room and was abused by her boyfriend. Like, that makes a lot of sense as to why that room felt weird. She probably stays in there and or in the hallway, I guess. Oh my God, what a crazy story. Thank you so much for sharing. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments. That concludes our creepy compilation for today. If you enjoyed these stories, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see more next time. But if you want to keep it going right now, you can check out this video or this playlist.